Hi everyone, in this screencast uh, we'll look at some additional payroll details. Um, we'll see basically those custom deductions and incomes, um, how they actually work. We'll remit those deductions to our payroll authorities. We'll pay a vacation pay. We'll see what happens when an employee leaves our employment. Um, we'll print a payroll check run, so a batch and we'll look at some of the reports, T4s and ROE and whatnot. So first of all, let's give uh, Ken Fryson a loan. So I'm gonna pay f uh, create a paycheck for Ken Fryson. And when we do that, his default hours pop in. I wanna clear all of this so it's a zero before I give him this loan. So I'll delete that 70 hours. We still have his custom deductions being deducted. We don't want to deduct that from the loan. Those are for a regular paycheck, paycheck so I'm gonna just delete those amounts as well. And we should be down to zero. And then I'll go back and give him a $250 loan. And this is uh, check number 44 uh, on March 10th period start date I'm just gonna say that's the first of March and period end date March 15th and I'll go go ahead and post Start date, check date, oh, period end date should be March 15th. And I'll post. All right, now I'm going to give uh, Mark his regular paycheck, sorry, Ken his regular paycheck, and I'll deduct that loan from that paycheck as well. So this is uh, his regular March 15th paycheck. I'll say the start date is the first, period end date is the 15th as well. So if I look, I click over to deductions, you see all those customer deductions are actually being deducted. And he's gonna pay back that loan. And uh, he actually worked two hours of overtime as well. Now we're gonna allocate portions of this paycheck to particular departments. So we use the little check mark, there's only one. The entire paycheck gets allocated. And I'm allocating 70% uh, to sales. And 15 to the other departments. And I choose OK. So that, in that manner, we can did, um, allocate a payroll transaction to separate departments, the entire transaction. And I'm going to go ahead and post. And uh, if I look at my payroll account, I'll just click on banking here. Notice I'm uh, running low on funds. I still have to pay two employees, so I'm just going to quickly transfer $6,000 into this account from um, this one here. We have a lot of money in that one. So we could just use a transfer for that. And I'll do that on uh, March 10th as well.
All right. So if you click on uh, employees and payroll, we have the payroll check run. So this allows us to produce uh, multiple paychecks at the same time. Now we've already paid Ken, but we still need to pay Mark and Albert. And Mark worked 71 hours. And he had two hours overtime. And he had an $80 bonus. And we're going to allocate his check to the design department. And Albert, if I click on him, he's now active down here. So if you want to choose each employee, you click on the top half of the dialog, and then you modify at the bottom half. Albert Swinton. He works 69 hours, one hour overtime, and 6040 sales installation for him. And we'll go ahead and uh, add a starting check number. And we'll go ahead and post. Alrighty. Next is uh, remitting those deductions to the authorities. So if you look at the trial balance, uh, we're going to be remitting for February. We're still in March, so we don't have to remit for March yet. But we're going to remit the amounts we previously deducted from our employees. So I'm going to look at the trial balance for February 28th. There we go. And you'll see that we have amounts in all of those payroll payable accounts, right? EI, CPP. So we want to get those out of there and get them to the authorities that we owe them to. I'm just going to leave this open so we can see what happens to those accounts once we remit. So we just choose the pay remittance here. And I'm going to pay, let me just bring that to the forefront again. I'm going to pay the Receiver General on March 14th. This is check number. Uh, Forty-seven, I think. On March fourteenth, and I'll remit all of those amounts. For the reference number, it's usually a nine digit. Uh, payroll number, uh, number with um, uh, two initials and four characters after it as well. Go ahead and post. notice that those amounts are no longer there. Alrighty. Let's quickly look at how we uh, release vacation pay. So I'm going to pay uh, Mark Polson is taking his uh, annual vacation or a portion of so we want to pay him out all of the vacation pay that is presently in the vacation pay payable account. So I'm going to pay him on uh, 
March 31st. Now I want, this is not his regular paycheck, so I'm gonna remove all of the deductions from it. Although, except for RSP, that's automatically calculated. And no hours, it's just vacation pay. So he should, oh, and remove his car allowance as well. He doesn't need any money for his personal vehicle while he's on vacation. And then um, under vacation, we presently have 266.76. So I'll enter that. still contributing to his RSP since that's a percentage and we're going to allocate vacation pay to design because that's where he generally works and post oh I believe it's 47 fine now if we don't want that uh, to keep on coming up that was the next paycheck the next check number is 48 so if I click on the little finder here no um, I have to go to uh, reports and forms and add that there so set up settings sorry set up Reports and forms is where we change check numbers. And then checks 1090, we want that to be 48. And I'm just going to add a check number here as well. Make that 49 or something. And okay. In real life, you would get that from your check stock. Or if it was automatically put on the check or printed on the check, then we would uh, calculate it based on that. All right, so employee departures. So um, Albert is leaving our um, employment mid-pay period. So let's go ahead and pay him. Sorry, great paycheck. So check that it's March 31st. Great start date, 15th, 16th, period end date, March 31st. And he only worked 47 hours so far. We're giving him a $100 bonus. And We'll pay him all of his vacation pay. And all of his deductions. Uh, we'll, half of, we'll half those deductions. He only worked half a month. So that's basically creating a last paycheck, all of the hours that they presently worked, that they worked in the uh, last pay period, as well as everything they're owed. And I'll go ahead and post. to allocate 
and we'll allocate this to installation and repairs. And we'll go ahead and post. All right. Now we want to generate an ROE for him. So if we go to Albert Swinton, let's just change that to mail. We terminated him on March 31st and he quit. And we're gonna make him inactive. I'll save and close. Reports, payroll, record of employment. I'm going to change that to the th March 31st. Display, select all, and I'll add my name and number. And OK. So all of the hours are automatically calculated for us. Termination date, final paycheck, insurable hours when he actually began his employment. And we can choose print. And OK. I'll just throw it on my desktop so he can find it easily. Call it ROE. And you'll notice that there are no field boundaries on the ROE. So basically, you have to load the printer with actual ROEs in order to get to figure out what these amounts are for. And those uh, ROE forms are provided by the government. All right, so the next thing is um, creating uh, T4s. And go back here. And print T four. And there we go. All of the information from payroll and all of the T4s for all of our employees. And we can also print the summary. So that should match the total amounts. Again, if you want to see the boundaries, you can uh, change it to plain printer, printer in the uh, reports and forms options. All right, so that's basically lesson four. Um, again, um, remitting those deductions and generating ROE and T4s. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.